I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you can polish some off there, Big Daddy. <laughs> Slabber Reb Zero. Charcoal King One. <laughs> hey guys. So what's on the menu today? Bing! Smoked baby back ribs. Stay tuned. So if you thought that baby back ribs, spare ribs, St. Louis style ribs, just the word ribs in general is daunting, is uh, scary, is I've never done it before. I don't have the right grill. I don't have the right setup. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to take you step by step process from start to finish and get you to where you need to be with the most mouth watering tender ribs you've ever had. How do we do that? First step, let's look at the ribs. I bought two different types of ribs this time because I wanted you guys to get more of like a national brand. Uh, hopefully this is national, I would think it was. Smithfield's a pretty big company. Uh, it ex actually says extra tender. And then we just got our basic grocery store. We got a Kroger's local, and I just went with their all natural baby back ribs. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of baby back ribs. I've always grown up on just basically the, the whole rib section. Uh, we like to gnaw and chew and scrounge the bones and it's never been one of those uh, pretty sights. I mean, I've had barbecue sauce in my ears before, but we just like to do a couple basic things. We're gonna get these trimmed up, open them up, show you guys what to look for in a rib. And I can already tell you now that rule number one, if you're gonna do multiple ribs on a grill, no matter what copper grill you have, is uniformity. Just like when you're chopping a vegetable for a stew or anything like that, you want your items to be uniform so they cook evenly and everything's done at the same time. So that's what I've tried to do. Match the hatch, as I'd say. All right. I don't know if we can get a good shot of this, but I hope you guys can see that this is pretty lean meat right here, okay? Then coming across here, you got a little bit more fat and then obviously you got the fat showing. Same thing with here. This marbled fat right here, I'm telling you, is what you're looking for. Gets a little bit lean, but you can see the fat running through. We got some pretty good ribs here. I think they're gonna be just fine when they come off the grill. All right guys, so now that our ribs are open, I'm just looking around, I'm just looking for anything that just basically just looks like meh. Um, and I don't even take it off. Some people trim it off, which is fine. Some people would go ahead and trim this off. I love the different textures. I'm not worried about that one perfect bite. Like I told you, man, I love a good set of ribs. You see this fat sticking off? I think when you render the uh, the ribs out, you know, when you cook them long and slow, that uh, all this is just flavor. So I'm not gonna take anything off of there. Uh, one thing we will do though, talk about this membrane that runs across. Uh, when I grew up, we didn't even cut the membrane on. We, had, uh, we didn't even take the membrane off. We kept the membrane on, but the older I get, it seems like the more, uh, the more I do it, things a little bit different. But all we're gonna do is just run down, right down the bone. Now this stuff's slimy, it's sticky, it's slimy, and it's very hard to get off. But once you get it started, it's almost like silver skin on a filet or something like that. You find the sweet spot, there it is. And what we're gonna do, just take a paper towel, and hopefully, if you're lucky enough, it's like pulling painter's tape off. You find that nice groove, there we go, and pull it all off, see that? And what that's gonna do is help your seasonings get to the bottom side of the ribs, plus it makes it just a little bit more tender. All right, so now that we got the membranes off, it's a, basically it works out in your favor. We're gonna keep it show side down, uh, presentation side down. So when it's face down like this, it's a good time to start your seasoning. All we're gonna do is add a little mustard. All it does is just, it's a very neutral uh, flavor. It doesn't uh, change it. And that's what we're always big about is not changing the flavor, we enhance the flavor. And we're just gonna do an easy rub. This is one of those methods to where, don't be too shy about touching your food. You wanna get it all in the nooks and crannies. If you don't have mustard, it's not a big deal. You can throw just a touch of olive oil on there. 
I've seen people use a little bit of mayonnaise. The whole point is it just creates a like a uh, a surface area for your seasoning to stick really well. Now I'm gonna use my uh, world famous seasoning. You guys might ask what it is. Whatever's in this, I can't reproduce. Whatever's in this is a concoction of about five different brands. I have yet, still today, picked up one container from the shelf of a store or from a, a market or anywhere and thought, oh my God, that's the one. That's the perfect one. It seems like one's too salty, one's too sweet. It seems like one will have a container like this, you sprinkle it all over something and you eat it and you're like, there's not even any flavor in it. So to me, it's just a combination of, of this and that. So I can't tell you what kind of seasoning to use. We are gonna season a little bit liberally on the backside. Remember, you're fighting all that bone and most of the time this is gonna render out anyway when the fat starts dripping. What a good choice of words. Fat starts dripping. Now you know you're in, mm. you know it started off right when you talk about fat dripping. <laughs> All right. I will say this. Now is not the time to add barbecue sauce. If you add anything that's too sugary or too sweet now through the course of the cook, your sugar is going to have a more tendency to burn. And I'd also say when you use a spice rub, be careful of the sugar content because that would be the same thing. All right. For the grace of not washing our hands, we're just gonna turn this bad boy over. And now you guys can see why we waited to do the presentation side last. Our grill is sitting about 250 right now. If you guys haven't seen the video, this is why I'm doing the ribs. Uh, check this link above. It's how to use your charcoal grill as a smoker. We've got it set up. It's pegging about 250. The, the grill's actually ready to go. So it's a good old season. Now, one trick with seasoning, so you're not gonna glob your seasoning, you're gonna have like an even coat is get up a little bit higher. Don't worry about sprinkling the seasoning off, but what you're gonna do is just come a little bit higher. And what you'll notice is you can get a lot more even coatage. Is that a word, coatage? There's another- Coatage. That's another dictionary word right we'll there. We'll look that up. Yeah. Just like wearing a blanket, even coat. Now it's just like anything else, guys. You're gonna have to determine how much spice you want. I'm more of a, like a, a neutral down type of person. I don't like it to be overpowering. Um, the way we cook our ribs, the meat definitely is the star of the show. So all we're trying to do is enhance the flavor of these ribs. All right, here we go. I would say this, quick tidbit. Our meat has been sticking out for about, I don't know, about 35 to 45 minutes right now. Our meat has um, been sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Before, after. All right. But the point is, uh, our meat's been out. And um, like I said, I don't have any problem with the meat coming up to room temperature. Um, if you want to put your seasoning on first, there's two, two ways to think about it. Some people say definitely don't do it overnight because the salt draws out the moisture. Other people say you can only season your meat before you put it on the grill. Obviously, the third option is about an hour. Typically, I go for the third hour for 20 years. Third option. The third option, yeah. We just go for about an hour. You guys just saw me. All I did was sprinkle it on and we're already going to the grill. So it's not that big of a deal. The people that swear by the, the ribs being in the refrigerator overnight, growing up, that's all my dad ever did. We seasoned it the night before, whether it be chicken or pork, and I never knew any difference. And still today, when we battle each other over ribs or something like that, I don't sit there and say, hey, do you season these overnight? Or I can tell you season these overnight. So don't get caught up in that stuff. That was we get caught up in. Mm. These thick and juicies. Mm. All right, guys, so we let our meat rest. We're pegging about 250, 255. Hope you guys see that's a great target temperature for us today. Um, we're just gonna open it up. Like I said, the grill. Ooh, look at all that. Today we're using apple wood. Um, I just already had the uh, the wood available, so. You guys see my thermometer, cause this is, ooh, this is where the meat's gonna be. So the whole process basically, 
is remember when you're smoking something, you're trying to get the meat away from the coals. The coals are over here, they're back against the wall, they're deep down. So all we're gonna do, woo, that smoke stuff. So all we're gonna do is close this up. Now it's the weight game. What are we waiting for? Basically about every hour from now on, we're just gonna open the grill and check it. Um, we're not gonna bore you guys with the details. We'll probably do like a little question and answer uh, through the process to get you guys basically caught up and basically like frequently asked questions. And uh, from there, we're just gonna open the lid a couple times, spritz it, not to spritz it, all that's gonna be covered. And then we're gonna shoot for about a three and a half to four and a half hour cook. Why does that matter? Why is there such a big gap? Just because you're trying to reach a target temperature doesn't mean that your meat's gonna be done at that time. So let's say we're trying to hit 190 to 195 degrees. Once we get there and we notice that the meat's not quite yet ready, we're just gonna let it go a little bit longer. So we'll take you through that process. We're gonna get cleaned up and uh, we'll see you guys in a couple hours. All right guys, so when we're talking about spritzing, we're talking about just basically adding moisture to the meat, keeping it moist while it goes that uh, long, low and slow process. Majority of the time, I do not spritz. I will spritz on this video just because I think it gives you guys just another idea of what to do. My daughter has commandeered my squirt bottle. Why does that matter? Because she likes to brush her hair with it and she thinks that it helps with the tangles. So we're gonna to have to spritz without a spritzer. Why does that matter? Because if you're at home watching this video and you don't have something that I have, if you don't have the grill that I have, if you don't have the mustard I have, if you don't have the vinegar I have, relax. Don't worry about it. So what we're gonna do is make our spritz liquid and then we're gonna figure out how to get it to the ribs without a spritzer. Maybe a little fingers, maybe a little barbecue baster. The point is they're gonna be spritzed without my squirt bottle. All right, all I do right now, I've got a quarter cup of water. I do not add apple juice, apple juice concentrate, cranberry juice, or anything that's sweet. Why? Because I'm not necessarily a huge sweet fan when it comes to ribs. I love more of the, I wouldn't even call it sour, the more robust, the more... Um, Smoky, savory. Savory. Sa savory would be a great word for it. Um, I do like my barbecue sauce sweet and tangy on top, but I don't wrap them in uh, brown sugar. I don't put honey on them or anything like that. I, mm -mm, not for me. All right, quarter cup of water. We're gonna do two parts. So basically it's half a cup. So two to one ratio? Yes. Apple cider vinegar to water. Yes. And then I'm gonna just throw in just a touch more seasoning. I don't know how much that is. Whatever I put in there, that looks good to me. Um, Cause I'm telling you, it's not that big of a deal. You don't have to are put it in Are you stirring that with your finger? These are God utensils. We're just gonna end up basing our ribs with this right here. We'll just start from the bottom, give it a little bit of love, and we'll go from there. All right, next thing, I don't know, 12.30, we'll see you guys about 1.30, 2 o'clock, checking our ribs. Um, see you then. Uh, all right, guys, you see I'm working extremely hard cooking those baby back ribs. Got my wireless thermometer, got my beer. I'm gonna answer some questions. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, question number one, let's see. What temp do you cook ribs at? Do, 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 Easy question, do, do, do. 250. By far, the most popular temperature of anything that you're gonna smoke is about 250 range. Now you can go plus or minus about 25 degrees. It doesn't seem like it bothers it that much. Plus the natural spikes in between airflow, uh, whether it's cold outside or hotter outside, seems to be like a natural e uh, ebb and flow. 250, low and slow, you're not gonna go wrong. Question two, how do we maintain the fire? Well, I put my alarm on my thermometer. So if it gets out of hand, it beeps. Other than that, I'm either sleeping watching a sporting event or watch my kids tear up my yard. Either way, it's pretty easy. Trust your grill. If you've got it to the point to where you're at now and you're hovering around 250, let it go. Adjust it as need be. If you need to adjust it twice an hour, adjust it twice an hour. Just be careful. Remember, don't panic if it gets to 251 or 276, I should say, because that's your 25 degree difference. Don't worry about it. Adjust your dampers, bring it back down, and you'll be okay. Do you ever need to like add wood or add coal or add anything? Yes, yes, and yes. Um, sometimes when you're using a big barrel smoker, 
uh, people use traditionally all wood. So it's funny when people say, well, you don't want to add smoke or add wood chips two or three hours in because the wood or the meat has already inherited all the smoke flavor it's going to get. Well, with the bigger burners, they use, tr they use wood because it's a cheaper uh, fuel source, but it adds fuel to the, I mean, it adds smoke to the meat all times. If you notice that your grill is dropping in temperature and you open your dampers to allow oxygen in and you still can't reach that temperature, it might be a fuel problem. So you wanna add more charcoals. Just open your lid, let all that oxygen get in there, build up to the temperature you need it, and then close your dampers down and just watch it. Once you get it to your temperature, you can walk away again. Um, why did you not wrap your ribs in aluminum foil? Well, there's a big discussion. It seems like there's always like that person out there, that group out there that swears by one method and swears by the other method. Wrapping or no wrapping. It's a preference. This is what happens when you wrap meat. It doesn't matter if it's ribs, if it's pork butt, if it's brisket. Oh, he's got to put his beer oh. down. <laughs> got to put the beer down. Um, I'm 100% I'm confident in this answer right here. A lot of people can wrap their meat wrong. <laughs> That's how she got pregnant. <laughs> Oh Lord, but up. Uh, <laughs> All right. If you wrap it too loose, um, you can create like a steam effect and you'll lose that bark that you worked so hard for to keep it low and slow. If you wrap it too tight, it doesn't allow the meat to braise. So the moisture has nowhere to go. So all that heat intensifies on the inside and I think you can overcook it really fast. Now there's also different ways to wrap it. You can wrap it with paper, you can wrap it with aluminum foil, you can wrap it with aluminum foil and paper. I grew up not wrapping our meat. Um, <laughs> 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 two for two, baby. The point is, is uh, my dad never wrapped it. And it's how you grow up and it's how you learn, it's how you adapt. Um, my dad never wrapped our meat and we always had an outstanding ribs. And uh, that's where I learned from. So. When you wrap it, you just gotta be very careful. It's gonna raise the temperature and it's gonna take your crust or your bark that you worked hard for and it's gonna create more like a soggy effect. Ooh. The other side, but, Oh no, but the bark is the best part. It is for us. But the other side is when you wrap it correctly and the juices inside of it continue to flow and you're braising it, not, not boiling it, it can create a more tender rib. But then again, here goes, the, here goes the mindset of, do ribs really need to fall off the bone? Quick answer, no. If your ribs are falling off the bone, it's overcooked. Point blank period. If your ribs, if you can pull a rib out and you smoked it for a standard rib that you're going to chew off the bone, it's overcooked. Now, you can cook your ribs longer and pull out the bone for other methods and for other uses of the rib. But for your standard back door, backyard, family come over, you want some give to the rib, but you do not do not want it falling off the bone. Okay. When do we put the barbecue sauce on? I would say, depends on if you cover it or uncover it. Um, if you notice that people that cover ribs or wrap ribs, they'll put honey, barbecue sauce, molasses, uh, brown sugar, uh, jellies. Ask me a question about jellies. I'd love to answer that question. Um, in the ribs and they'll wrap it and they'll put it on there for about an hour. To me, it, it just, it's too sweetness. It is just too sweet. I, like you said earlier, I like the savory side. Butter, I don't feel like you need to add butter because the ribs are literally full of fat to begin with. Um, so I don't see, besides moisture, what the ribs, what the butter's uh, giving it to it. The barbecue sauce typically has a lot of sweetness in it. So you gotta be careful. If you're gonna leave them unwrapped and you're gonna put barbecue sauce on it, you gotta be careful that you're not burning your ribs because the sugars will naturally caramelize and then you could run the risk of uh, being too done on the outside of your rib and not done enough on the inside of your rib. My guess, if you keep it at 250, is gonna be about that last hour. And how do we know when the ribs are done? Ooh. Well, there's target temperatures you should always look for when you're doing your meat. For example, when we did that uh, smoke a whole chicken, I'm going to point to that up there because somewhere up there is going to be a link. Our target temperature was like basically 160 to 165. But even at the 160 to 163 mark, I felt like our chicken was still producing bloody uh, juices. 
that's a telltale sign that your meat's not done. So we let it go to about 165 to 167, eight-ish, and we got clear juices, and that's when I knew we were done. Same thing with ribs. The golden rule from the people that are perfectionists out there say 190 to 203. That's a large gap. Don't let it fool you. We're going to show you through the uh, next couple uh, openings of the grill and stuff like that, things to look for to know if your ribs are tender. When the meat starts pulling away from your bone, you know you're getting close. When the meat's pulled away from the bone, you're close. So the 190 to 203 is basically the benchmark. But just because it reaches that temperature does not mean your ribs are done. They could be done before or they could be done after. I know that's bad information, but that's honestly the truth. And that's how you get mouth-watering ribs. Don't worry about necessarily the temperature. Let the food tell you when it's done. Question number what? It's not even on there. The jams. If you <laughs> use a jelly, it is literally, I think, one of the best ways to infuse a flavor without going the extra mile. There are so many flavors. There are so many, uh, like there's hot pepper jelly. There's uh, jellies with... Um, like apricot and orange. There's mixed marmalades there. I mean, the flavors are just about as bad as barbecue sauces. Let's show them this link right here. All right, now that you guys have seen all that, and now that you've understood why there's so many barbecue sauces and barbecue spices, it's hard to give you that one that just um, sets yourself above the, the rest because there's so much competition. So when it comes to jams, jams could add that just um, that, that, that kick, that one thing that when you bite into the rib, you're like, damn, now that's good. Where did that come from? You know what that's called? That's called that je ne sais quoi. That's French for... <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's French for... Exactly. I don't remember exactly, but I know it's called <laughs> je ne sais quoi. <laughs> that was the word that slipped my tongue, believe it or not. Out of all the words I can't pronounce in English, je ne sais je quoi. Je ne sais quoi <laughs> no, no, was to... close. Uh -huh. All right. Now that we've bored the audience, if you guys have any other questions or comments, leave those below. Uh, we're just letting those go. All right, guys. So it's been about an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. I uh, just want to give you guys a quick shot. Uh, see what we're looking at. I'm going to rearrange my ribs because I feel like this right here is probably going to be the hotter side since it's closer to the fire. Just show you guys what that looks like. All right, now I just want to notice, show you guys, notice how the, the it's uh, dried up a little bit. That's what we're looking for. So at this point... We're going to use my world famous spritzer. I have to talk to my daughter about that. Not a lot. We're just going to base it a little bit. Like I said, you don't have to have every tool in the shed to make mouthwatering ribs. Just a little bit goes a long ways. Now at this point, you haven't noticed really the meat pulling away from the bone yet. So it's really not a good place to show you. Uh, we're going to keep letting it go. Uh, our fire looks good. And uh, see you back in about an hour. Well, the, I'll tell you the reason why. Sometimes you get one that's too salty. Sometimes you get one that's too sweet. Sometimes you get one, and I found that it had like a hickory flavor to it, which I was going for. I mean, a mesquite. And, uh, and I was going for it. But when you just taste them all three individually, a great way, let me tell you guys something. Tech tip of the week. Use a chicken breast. I know it sounds weird, but they're usually $1.99 a pound. You're not going to break the bank. If you get a new seasoning and you're scared to use it on your family or on a, on a brand new uh, like slab of ribs or something like that, you're not really familiar with it, put it on some chicken. Throw it on the grill for a couple minutes, get it done, and you're going to get that natural flavor that that seasoning has. Um, anyways, tip of the week. But nevertheless, we've done that. I'm going to uh, rotate these. So the seasonings to me are almost like, I just, like I said, I just can't find that one that I could just bank on. So I mix them. So if you guys out there make seasonings and want to send me one and want to give me an honest, or want me to give an honest review, I'll be glad to do it. Because I ain't scared to tell the truth. That's for dang sure. All right. 
if there's a way to show you guys how hard these feel, they're nowhere near ready. You could just feel it. This is one of those things where when you touch your meat. <laughs> <laughs> You're just full of it today, yep. honey. I had that one in the back pocket. Open it up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Holy cow. All oh, perfect. You guys see how that meat's pulling away from the bone? That's what I'm talking about. That's how you start noticing. Look right here. See now you're starting to see the ribs. Oh, and they just feel more tender. Just feel more tender. If you guys hear the lawnmower in the background, sorry for the noise. That's my neighbor mowing the yard. He keeps a nice, fresh, clean yard, so I can't, can't argue with him about that. All right. Like I said, there's not one barbecue sauce, there's not one seasoning that is absolutely fall in love with. But I do know I keep this on hand at all times. Why? Because we make our barbecued ribeyes with that and that's almost like exclusively how we do our ribeyes. You guys can check that link above. But this is my go-to barbecue sauce. If there was one barbecue sauce that we settle on that we always have in the refrigerator, it's gotta be this one. So with my ribs, like I said, I like mine a little bit more um, uh, savory. So all I do is cut the sweetness with a barbecue sauce with some vinegar. So I think we've got about an hour left. I can tell how much. Ooh, got a little on me. See how the, the meat's bending back, how it's coming off the bone a little bit? That's right there where we want it. So I'm just going to do a quick mix. So we're, put, we're saucing them up with about an hour left. Yes. Now, it'd be, it, it could be a little bit less than an hour. You gotta, you gotta pay attention. You know, I don't want my sugars, my barbecue sauce to burn that much, but I do like a real, I like mine saucy, I do. You know, at this point, if you guys wanted to spritz it one more time and add some more dry uh, seasoning to it, you know, that would be a good way. I think, oh, God, I can't remember, I can't, that could be the Memphis way. I'm, don't quote me on that. But I love my ribs saucy. So I even might come back out here and put another layer of sauce on. All right. But I think the color's there. I guess you guys can see, you know, the color's more natural. It's more neutral. It, a little, it is showing a little dark. Um, but I think that has to do with my spice combination. Mm. All right, guys, we're gonna keep a couple of eyes on it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead close my dampers completely because I think the rib itself is probably 85 to 90 percent there so what I'm gonna do this would be the idea of like wrapping your ribs for that last hour I'm gonna just shut everything off keep the oven effect and they're going to give it like I said one more about let's come out here in about 35 to 45 minutes we'll check on it and finish this bad boy up all right guys so we're at the final stage I don't know if you guys want to Oh, yeah. Looks like a, a snaggle tooth sticking out. Oh, yeah. You guys see how that it's not necessarily coming out? That's how I like it right there. All right. So talk about personal preference. It seemed like the whole day I've been talking about you add what you want to do or what you like. If you like sweet, if you like hot, if you like uh, smoky, whatever. Same thing with the spice. I'm going to take my portion of the rib. Not mine. My portion of Just the rib. Just yours and sprinkle just a little bit more seasoning. Notice how I said my portion. Ha, <laughs> the full rack? The full rack. All right, just like that. So we've hit our, we've hit our desired doneness. How do I know? How do you not know? Look how much meat's pulling away. Mm. They got some give to them. We're gonna take them inside. We got some baked potatoes and some corn. I'm gonna let these bad boys cool down and we're gonna do our famous bite. All right guys, so after about four hours total, give or take, the moment's here. So uh, basically what we did, we pull them off, we let them cool down just like you should any meat. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys a quick tip on how to cut them. We're gonna cut into them and we're gonna see how juicy they are. I love juicy meat. Mm. Mm, thick and juicy. All right. Here's a trick. 
you guys notice the bones running down. Sometimes I notice people cutting right down, right in between the bones. And I've always grew up and noticed the fact that if you just do one little trick, find a bone and go right on the inside of it. Let the knife guide down the bone. And if you do that consistently down each rib, then when you pick up the rib, you're only eating the meat on one side. So here we go, following right down that, that inside rib. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can tell how juicy that is. I don't even know if it shows up, but you can see the juice on the knife. Now look, this is what I'm talking about. So now the rib is all right there, and then all this is meat. So, oh God, look at all that. So it just makes it, look at that. Oh it. yeah, look that's that. the money shot. All right, here we go. Dad bless it, boy, it's hot. Mm. <laughs> mm. All right, I told you the meat should pull away from the bone. You can see it's not, right? I mean, it's pretty stuck on there. That's a good thing. But another good thing <laughs> is when you bite it and it's got that, it's got that bite back to it. That's when you know you've done it right. These are without a shadow of a doubt. Mmm. Mm. Don't tell me you gotta have fancy equipment. Don't tell me my daughter didn't steal my squirts bottle. Spritz bottle. Mm. <laughs> Your spray bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. Hey, her hair is important, Daddy. Uh -huh. The detangler. I've learned what detangler is. Trust me, I use it every single morning. <laughs> no. What can we take away from this? Don't worry. Just keep it low and slow. Do what you like. You're going to have some of the mouth-watering ribs that a restaurant can't give you. I mean, this stuff right here, I'm going to tell you what. On my other barbecue pit, my smoker... I want a lot, a lot of competitions, and this right here is hands down. I can't stop eating. <laughs> this is hands down one of the best ribs I've ever cooked. Period. Well, share the wealth now. Give mommy a bite. Yeah. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Press that subscribe button. And pound that notification <laughs> button. button, and we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the Charcoal King. You just watched the world's greatest. Smoked baby back ribs. Peace. Peace.